Hello, lovely internet strangers. What amazes me is that no one ever talks about the extreme variety of ways that people conduct their relationships and have expectations around their relationships. According to my historical understanding, and I'm still doing a lot more reading about marriage and men and women's roles in history, but marriage used to be about survival of the species, ensuring survival of offspring. Love did not really enter into it. I mean, yes, I'm sure it's that some people who got married were in love, but that didn't really matter. I don't really know that there was any expectation to maintain that feeling that you had at the beginning over a long period of time. It was like, that's what got you in the door and like got you to have the kids. Oh, now you guys are stuck together, like having the kids. Arranged marriage was a thing for a super long time across culturally because it didn't matter if you love them or not, you needed a good partner who was going to, for men, produce good offspring and then for women to ensure survival of the offspring. So you were looking for certain qualities in that person, strong and capable if they're a man, childbearing hips, virginal and pure, whatever the qualities that you're you know, looking for. Men and women didn't expect for that relationship to be like their true love. As much as there are like all these fairy tales about, you know, the idea of marrying your true love and living happily ever after, right? Like that's the fantasy. What was their concept of happily ever after, right? We've gotten, at least in America, to a place where society is so wealthy. I don't just mean that like everyone has a lot of money, but we're not like scraping along just to survive. You know, we're not like at a subsistence level. So the relationship between men and women, as far as marriage, the necessity for long-term pair bonding is different. People have so much more choice now. Like you don't have to get married. So there's a sense now where it's like, well, if you decide to get married, like you have a choice. And so wait for the person that you love. And the birth control pill changed things a lot. And so because our relationship to marriage is different, people have a lot of choice, not only in partner, but then what that relationship is going to be like. The reason to find a partner wasn't to like have this amazing love life, fulfill this fantasy. It was to raise children and you had roles, you know, you had husband and wife, you had mother and father. Whereas now, like having kids for a lot of people is like something they want to do, but it's kind of secondary often to the relationship. And they have a lot more expectation about the relationship of what it should be like. And people have different expectations. Look, I have observed many marriages that have lasted a long time. None of them are alike. There are some bedrock principles that probably unite them. You can see that they have like demonstrable respect for one another. There's one older couple I know and they are extremely independent. You know, they spend a lot of time apart. They have like separate areas in the house. They don't sleep in the same bedrooms, but they've been married forever. They clearly like each other, but they're also not super like romantic-y, like lovey-dovey with each other. And then there's another older couple in my life. They're super codependent from my perspective. And there's some reasons for that because of some health issues, but they're super codependent and they're super like gross into each other. And then I've seen another couple that's maybe like somewhere more in the middle. They're still clearly in love after, you know, three decades, but they're not as like codependent-y creepy about it. I'm planning to marry my boyfriend if both of us are having sex with other people, but otherwise we are doing all the things things that married people do and we're being all the things that married people are to each other, does that count? You kind of want to tangle your life together with someone, you know, because you have someone to, well, it's like two ropes that are tangled together. It's stronger, especially during times of weakness. And you have two brains instead of one. And that actually turns out to be really helpful when sure. things mm -hmm. are complicated. And and it builds a solidity into your life and a and a and a reality into your life to have someone who's along with you on this very long voyage. And so I think that deepens your life in a way that isn't really possible with fragmentary relationships as a single person. If Peterson was to look at my polyhammer situation, I have tangled my life together with my boyfriend. It would not be easy to just walk away from this relationship on multiple fronts or on a lease together. His friends are my friends. My friends are his friends. My family is you know, his family and vice versa. We take each other into consideration with financial decisions, get financial advice. We buy things for both of us. We share financial costs on rent and food and everything. We rely on each other to confide in for advice. When I really hated my job and I really wanted to quit, my boyfriend said that if I really wanted to quit, you know, he would support me. That's pretty tangled. <laughs> Despite not being married, that's pretty tangled. And we've been through a lot of shit together. 
We have a lot of history, events in my life that he was there for, that he helped get me through, and vice versa. The only way I could be more tangled is to have kids with him, really. Like, what do you do when you get married? That's easy. You take someone who's just as useless and horrible as you are, and then you shackle yourself to them. And then you say, we're not running away, no matter what happens. Yeah, well, that, that's perfect, because then you don't get to run away. And the thing is, is like, if you can run away, you can't tell each other the truth. Because if you tell someone the truth about you and they don't run away, they weren't listening. And so if you don't have someone around that can't run away, then you can't tell them the truth. And so that's part of the purpose of the marriage. It's like, okay, okay, I'll bet on you, you bet on me. It's a losing bet, we both know that. But <laughs> given our current circumstances, we're unlikely to find anyone better. And I just like find that so strange of a thing to say. You know, one, I have friends who I have told the truth. Yeah, actually, I mean, some of them have run away, but that doesn't mean that I didn't tell them the truth. It just meant that then we weren't friends anymore. And I learned that like, I didn't want that relationship. If telling them the truth made them want to not work this out with me, that they didn't have a generous view of my character. My boyfriend and I, I'm not gonna say that we've always been like 150% on with each other. There's always those, you know, omissions, sometimes unintentional, white lies, but like my boyfriend and I have been so honest with each other, so brutally, brutally honest. You know, you always hear all these people that find out like that their boyfriend had a second family or he never meant it when he said I love you. Like I just don't have any fears about that and I never have in this relationship. Like even when we were sort of more casually dating and I've been really brutally honest with my other partner. Because without that shackling, there are things you will never ever learn because you'll avoid them. You can always leave. And if you can leave, then you don't have to tell each other the truth. That is so cynical. Like that is so cynical. And the idea that married people are just telling each other the truth all the time is so ludicrous. If that was the case, we wouldn't have cheaters. We wouldn't have Ashley Madison and we wouldn't have men finding out kids aren't theirs. People lie to their spouses, they cheat, they do all kinds of deceitful shit. They run out on their kids, they clean out the bank account and leave. They have a second family they're supporting. They're secretly going out to gay bars and hooking up. They're gambling behind your back. They're not telling you they don't like your new haircut. Even my parents will tell me things that they think about each other that I'm pretty sure they don't tell each other. And they have a great fucking marriage and they've been married for over 30 years. So this idea that like married people are just always telling each other the absolute truth is completely ridiculous. It just idea that you like have to shackle yourself. I don't know, maybe most people do. I don't want someone to only be with me because I have to make them like legally shackle themselves to me. Like the only reason that my boyfriend and I are going to get married fundamentally is because I want to have children. It's easier in society and legally to be married before you have children. Neither of us really believe in marriage or think that then that's when we'll be really in a relationship. You know, now it'll be a real relationship will really love each other. It's not going to be like, now, like, this is it. Now we're going to be really honest with each other. Like, if that's the purpose of marriage, then I don't really need to be married because I already have that in my current relationship. I asked my friend slash lover when he finally got married to his wife, after they'd already been together for like a decade, was it different? And he was kind of like, eh. <laughs> like, not significantly so, no. Cause they'd already been together for a decade. What is there? What is there after that? There's no there after that. You've been through everything. You lived with them. You, you fought with them. You seen them when they're dirty. You seen them when they're sick. You know, you've been on trips together. You fought about money. You've been through all that shit. So there's no like, oh, now, okay, we, well, we signed the piece of paper. Okay. And then it's not like, oh, and now this other thing. Like previously people didn't used to live together before they got married. So yeah, it's understandable that like marriage was this thing, but people are already doing the living together. The living together, you have to be around that person, you know? You are agreeing to like remove the erotic charge that comes from the distance of not living together, of having to wait to have sex with each other. You have to wait to have dates and to see them and you can think about them and miss them. Whereas when you live together, unless one of you is like 
out a lot of the time, like you're going to be around and it's going to be convenient for you to spend time together. And so it doesn't feel the same. And so you're saying like, I care about you enough. The benefits will outweigh having to work harder to maintain our romantic attraction. Like I want to be there for you every day. I want to tangle our lives together. I want to share the domestic duties. I want you to be there when I go to sleep. I want you to be there when I wake up. Because like anyone who's lived with someone that they're in a romantic relationship, I guarantee at some point you just come home and you just want to be alone and like it's not the same to just go in the other room you know you just want the whole place like to yourself you just want to deal with anyone and you give all that up you know it's not your place it's our place what exactly are you saying to one another when you live with each other just think about it well for now <laughs> you're better than anything else i can trick <laughs> but i'd like to reserve the right to trade you in <laughs> Conveniently, if someone better happens to stumble into me. <laughs> well, how could, how could someone not be insulted to their core by an offer like that? Now, they're willing to play along with it because they're going to do the same thing with you. <laughs> now, well, that's exactly it. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know you're not going to commit to me, so that means you don't value me or our relationship above everything else. But as long as I get to escape if I need to, then I'm willing to put up with that. I was like, wow, okay, like that is so, so cynical. I'm not saying that people don't do that. I'm just saying, he's saying, if you're living with each other, then you're just saying, well, you're better than anyone else for now. I just reserve the right to trade you in, you know, conveniently if someone else comes along. Because, you know, unless we're married, then you're saying you don't value me or our relationship above anything else. It's like, don't knock living together, okay? I mean, even if you're renting, you know, don't knock the shit that you get locked into once you are living with someone. I took living together really seriously. It was something that I had wanted to do and I pressed my boyfriend on it for a long time. Then when he actually asked me, I was like, holy shit, like, am I ready for this? Because I saw it as a commitment. If we move in together and it doesn't work out, there's no going back to just dating each other and living in separate apartments. So the stakes are really high. Like I didn't see living together at all as like some really low stakes version of dating. If I wanted to do that, I wouldn't have moved in together. You know, if I was just thinking like, oh, well, if someone else comes along, then I'll trade you in. You know, you're not going to commit to me. So for him, commit equals marriage. Like there's no other way to commit to someone except to marry them. I just don't see how marriage equals commit because there are plenty of people who get married and their partners don't act in a committed way toward them. Like getting married isn't a guarantee. So Peterson basically thinks that if you don't shackle yourself to someone, then you'll just like try to leave whenever you have a fight. And I don't know, my boyfriend and I have had several huge fights, the kind where you feel like the relationship might end, but like it didn't. And it's at the point where the reason I'm comfortable getting married is because I don't feel like when we have a big fight that this is it and he's gonna leave or I'm gonna leave. Like I don't have that feeling anymore. So I feel comfortable getting married. Maybe according to Peterson, I'm doing that in reverse. But I know how high the stakes are for marriage. Like everything that's at stake legally and that my boyfriend would be the one getting screwed if things didn't work out. So maybe it's just because I have this understanding now of female nature that I've been very careful to make sure that I was 125 million percent sure about the stability of this relationship before for marriage. He once said, if you're not all in, you're not married. These are pretty provocative statements. Why do people find this controversial? Well, I think people are afraid of confronting the real problems and conflicts in their life, and no wonder, and they want an out. They want an option. And you can understand that, but the thing about marriage is that unless you're in it for the long run, it's very difficult to be desperate enough to solve the problems properly. Otherwise, if you always think you can escape, if that's always in the back of your mind, then you're going to be able to avoid engaging in that difficult problem-solving process. 
you know, this is the purpose of marriage. You know, Peterson says, you know, so you can have someone tell you the truth and so that you'll solve difficult problems together. And it's like, do you know how many people are in marriages and difficult problems come up and they don't solve them? Like, you know, my mom knows someone who got divorced because basically like, well, you know, she married her husband when he had money and then he lost his job. And then it was like, you know, I was accustomed to a certain lifestyle. And it's like, wow, whew, guess she didn't really like love him the way that we thought she did. And that's incredibly common. The advice my mother gave me about marriage was to find someone who makes you laugh because times aren't always going to be good. And if you can find someone who can make you laugh when times are bad, you know, if you can be with that person when times are bad as well as times are good, like that's the true connection. That's like true love because it's really easy to love someone when they have a good job and they're happy at their job and they're healthy both mentally and physically. But what happens if they lose their job or they get depressed or they get injured or they get cancer or they want to move your family across the country for a job or one of you cheats on the other? Other one. They gamble away your kid's college savings. Like people break up over that kind of stuff all the time. And like it or not, divorce is always an option. So yeah, I mean, it's costly and it's shitty, but people take that option all the time. And you can say that you're not going to take it, but unless you're part of a super religious or like really conservative community, like what's the enforcement mechanism for that? Pretty much no one goes into a marriage thinking, well, I would really like to end up divorced unless it's a green card marriage or they're a sociopath. You know, recently I read that the divorce rate is down because the younger women are not getting divorced. It appears that marriage is becoming less common among lower socioeconomic classes and it's more common among higher socioeconomic classes, but people wait a lot longer to do it. But I don't know. Whenever people talk about the fact that people who live together are more likely to get divorced than those who don't, there could always be a third factor, right? Is it the living together that makes people more likely to divorce? Or is it possible that people who are more likely to divorce are more likely to live together first because of some other, you know, some other third factor there? Or is it possible that people who don't live together before marriage, especially in current year, are more likely to be religious or at least hold traditional conservative values and therefore they're much less likely to get divorced because they see divorce as a really bad thing. So even if their marriage is shitty, they don't get divorced. I think that's certainly possible. Most people are living together before marriage, so they're more likely to get divorced because the kinds of people people that like don't live together before they get married don't really get divorced as much. And there's plenty of people who get married without knowing each other very well who end up divorced. And like not everyone is worth making sacrifices for. I had several previous boyfriends and all three of these guys I thought I was gonna marry them and I am so glad that I did not marry any of those guys because it would have been really, really, really bad. And I was completely in love with them. It was not because of a lack of love, but the practicalities, like having done this now, having done the living together, it would have been so bad. It would have destroyed those relationships so much worse than what actually happened when they ended. Any goodwill for each other probably would have been completely gone. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. If you'd like to see more videos, you can subscribe. If you like this video, please give it a like. I hope to have more content for you very soon.